Should you guess answers in the maths challenges when you don't know them? That's a question I get asked all the time and we're going to answer it in this video using a quick calculation about how the scoring works. So we'll have a look at the rules for the maths challenges, uh, I'll show you everything about uh, what you're allowed to take into the exam and things like that and then we'll look at whether or not you should guess. Now this video was made as part of an online course to help students prepare for the maths challenges and if you're preparing for any of these maths challenges what I say in this video is equally applicable to the junior, intermediate or senior maths challenges. Do head over to the link below where I've made free online courses to help you prepare for these challenges. At the time of making this video the junior maths challenge courses are available already and that exam is coming up next week and over the course of this year in advance of the next rounds of the intermediate and senior challenges I plan to get content out for those as well so do check out the link below and sign up for more information if they're not there already or sign up to the course if you're watching this in the future. Let's just look at the rules for the Junior Maths Challenge. Now you probably know already the Junior Maths Challenge is a multiple choice paper so all of the questions you just answer either A, B, C, D or E and one thing that that means is that although you can do working uh, on some scrap paper the working doesn't matter as part of the marking uh, of the test very different from other tests you do at school where you're told to show working all the time. Here you're just going to be scored on whether you uh, get the answer uh, right or not. Now uh, what I've copied in here is the uh, instructions from the front of the paper and we'll just look through these and um, there's a few interesting things to note about the scoring um, that you should consider when you're choosing your answers. So um, okay number one don't open the paper until you're told to you fine it's a 60 minute test um, and it says uh, for rough working you can use blank or lined paper but you're not allowed to use squared paper, no calculators and no measuring instruments so you're not allowed rulers and things. So the reason for this is they want you to approach the questions mathematically. I mean if they do have diagrams in there they're often not to scale anyway but because they're giving you a multiple choice uh, question sometimes by doing approximate measurements you might be able to kind of cheat your way to the answer. So no squares even to measure, you know you could use that to measure something uh, perhaps um, if you had those. Um, so uh, now I should say there's a little bit of a difference in here between uh, the papers that are sat in ordinary years and the 2020 paper and it looks like the 2021 paper that are going to be happening online because of the coronavirus um, COVID-19 uh, pandemic and so obviously this part about question four about using a HB pencil uh, doesn't matter on the answer sheet for the on if you're doing an online version there you just select the answer uh, in the online system um, but if you are doing it uh, when things are back to normal um, it's very important to only mark the answer uh, once you're really sure that is your final answer most students keep just a list of their answers next to the uh, marking scoring sheet and then fill them in at the end in case you want to change your mind because they're all marked by a computer usually and if you rub one out uh, and change your mind. Sometimes if you've marked it too hard it's kind of hard to rub it out and you might end up, uh, the computer might end up reading it as an error and not giving you the marks for it. Um, so really important things here about the amount of time you've got and the scoring rules and um, so it says here don't expect to finish the whole paper in the time allowed that is really excellent advice um, you know it's an hour paper but I think you know working through the papers in this course it's going to take you more than one hour per paper if you want to do all of the questions and get them all right. The aim of the idea of this uh, challenge is that you um, are really pushed to do some difficult things and it's partly about making sure you make the best use of your time so trying to you know the really best students will do the earlier questions really quickly and leave themselves time for the later ones but you can also do very well in this challenge by not even looking at the last few questions and focusing on the easier ones so as you do practice you know you'll get better at it and you'll get a sense of, uh, of where you are with that. Um, so don't expect to finish everything but hopefully you'll have time you know if you've if you've done if you prepared for this and you've taken this course you'll have you'll be able to work through you know questions 1 to 15 and a, and a fair amount of questions 15 to 25 depending how it goes. Right the scoring rules this is where I get so many questions about this challenge so let's focus on this now. Um, again two different systems right so um, uh, in online uh, in 2020 they ordered five marks for each of questions 1 to 15 and six marks for questions 16 to 25 and there were no penalties for wrong answers. So the maximum score here was 5 times 15 plus 6 times 10, that's 75 plus 60 which is 135 is the absolute maximum possible score and 
and that was that no penalties now usually um uh, and when we're back in to uh i think they'll probably do this again in 2021 i'm not absolutely certain but as long as there are no penalties for getting questions wrong uh, then you may as well take a guess at all the ones that you haven't had time for. Um, it's a free chance at getting the answer right. Everyone else will be doing it. So obviously uh, try your best to get them right. But do guess all of the uh, ones that you uh, don't know how to do here. Right? It says here um, in the rubric that you'll gain more marks and more satisfaction by doing one question carefully than by guessing lots of answers. And that's true. You should focus on some questions and try to get them right by logic obviously the more you get right the better your score is going to be but in this in this setup absolutely no reason not to guess and in fact even in the ordinary setup here um so perhaps we'll be back to this in future years so i'll talk about this here um the 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 incorrect answers were you would lose one mark for questions 16 to 20 if you got them wrong but you're getting six marks if you get it right okay so on average if you were to just totally guess you would lose uh one uh, four fifths of the time and you would gain six one fifth of the time now if you work this out this is minus four plus six over five so that's two fifths so actually by guessing you would on average gain two fifths of a mark per question obviously you make your uh it's a bit of a gamble you do make it a bit uh, random but you do gain on average and if you did that for five questions two fifths times five is two so on average you would gain two marks okay um for questions 21 to 25, you lose two marks though, so we'd lose two marks four fifths of the time, and we would um, we would uh, gain six marks one fifth of the time. So minus two times four fifths plus six times one fifths. This works out as minus eight plus six. This is minus two fifths. So we would actually lose two fifths of a mark every time we guessed on those questions, and over five questions we would lose two marks overall. So in ordinary times, it's definitely you can make a case for guessing 16 to 20, not so much for guessing 21 to 25, if you want to play this in the best possible way as a game. Um, but of course, if you look at the answers and even to 21 and 25, and somehow you know you can rule out three of the answers and there's only two left to decide from, then that might be worth a gamble. Right, so um, anyway, we don't want to game this paper too much. It's mostly about just, you know, having fun and, and doing the math. But, if we, but, you know, you may as well... Um, play to maximize uh, your score you can assume that everyone else knows the rules and they'd also do the same thing and as I say if you're doing it online and there's no penalty for, for wrong answers then uh, then why not guess them but do check if you're doing an online version that, that is the rules if they've gone back to the normal rules obviously you know maybe just guess 16 to 20 and not 21 to 25 right what else um, I'll talk a little bit more about um, uh, the scoring and sort of uh, different levels to get different certificates in uh, the next video by the way and if you're interested in um, uh, this I've also made a video on my YouTube channel that I'll link either in this video or the next one um, about uh, why these about the changes to the online the scoring system when it was online in 2020 with a lot more detail there and how that affected uh, the, the results as well um, okay so uh, your answer sheet is read by machine we've talked about that already um, so don't do any other writing or doodling on the answer sheet. Um, it, it will read everything on there. So you do everything else you need on the blank piece of paper if you're doing this uh, in person um, on a real piece of paper. And yes, uh, main thing here, this paper is about solving interesting problems, not about lucky guessing. Um, even though I would advise you to, to guess the ones you haven't done, um, I agree with this sentiment entirely. This paper is a really fun paper, loads of challenging questions, and I hope you're going to enjoy this course um, just to get into some interesting maths problems, to see some great ways of solving these puzzles. If you can master these papers and do well at them, um, yes, you'll be really well set up for maths in the future, but you know the great thing about these things is it also helps us to enjoy the subject, and uh, and, and that's worth just as much as any certificates and things that we get along the way. Don't forget if you're preparing for the math challenges, do check out my free online courses, links below.